Welcome to Abergavenny Baptist Church. Life, faith, together. The Bible reading is from Mark chapter 13, verses 1 to 8, and then Mark chapter 13, verse 26 to 33. Signs of the end of the age. As he was leaving the temple, one of his disciples said to him, Look, teacher, what massive stones, what magnificent buildings. Do you see all these great buildings, replied Jesus? Not one stone here will be left on another. Every one will be thrown down. As Jesus was sitting on the Mount of Olives opposite the temple, Peter, James, John and Andrew asked him privately, Tell us, when will all these things happen? And what will be the sign that they are all about to be fulfilled? Jesus said to them, Watch out that no one deceives you. Many will come in my name claiming, I am he, and will deceive many. When you hear of wars and rumours of wars, do not be alarmed. Such things must happen, but the end is still to come. Nation will rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom. There will be earthquakes in various places and famines. These are the beginning of birth pains. And verse 26, at that time, men will see the Son of Man coming in clouds with great power and glory, and he will send his angels and gather his elect from the four winds, from the ends of the earth to the ends of he the heavens. Now learn that this lesson, now learn this lesson from the fig tree. As soon as its twigs get tender and its leaves come out, you know that summer is near. Even so, when you see these things happening, you know that it is near, right at the door. I tell you the truth, this generation will certainly not pass away until all these things happen, until all these things have happened. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will never pass away. No one knows about that day or hour, not even the angels in heaven, nor the Son, but only the Father. Be on guard, be alert. You do not know when that time will come. Amen. So is this the end of the world? I mean, with, with the war in Gaza and the war in Ukraine and, and with the whole world just seemingly going crazy, it's easy to start wondering, is this the beginning of the end? And uh, when we look at it, of course, when we look at the global crisis with the climate change. It's really easy to start thinking, could this be the end of the world? And, and what does the Bible say about that? When will the world come to an end? And that's the exact question that Jesus' disciples are asking Jesus in Mark chapter 13 and verse 4. They say, tell us, when will these things happen? And what will be the sign that they are all about to be fulfilled. Now, now what had led the, the disciples to ask Jesus this question? Well, Jesus has just said in verse 2 that, that the temple would be destroyed, that not one stone here would be left on another, everyone will be thrown down. So, in other words, Jesus is prophesying that the temple would be destroyed, completely destroyed, never to be rebuilt. And when the disciples hear this, when they hear that the temple would be destroyed, they assume that means the world is coming to an end. You see, we need to understand their mindset. They, they believe that if God allowed the temple to be destroyed, that would mean the world was coming to an end. Why? Well, they believed God dwelt. God lived in the temple. And so they believed that God would never allow the temple to be destroyed and that they would always be safe in the temple. And so this, this idea that, that, that God would allow the temple to be destroyed for them meant that the world would end. But we also need to understand what they mean by the end of the world. 
So for them, what they mean, that they mean that this present evil age would come to an end and that God's new age would begin. And this was often referred to as the day of the Lord. You see, they were waiting for the day when God would enter into human history and would defeat all evil, would judge all evil, and then God's new age would begin when the, the world would be just the way it should be. And so when they hear Jesus saying that the temple would be destroyed, they assume in this means this will be the day of the Lord, this will be the end of this present evil age, and the new age would begin. And so they ask, when will this happen? But this was a false assumption. The temple being destroyed does not mean it's going to be the end of the world. We know that the temple was destroyed in A.D. 70. Within 40 years of Jesus prophesying that the temple would be destroyed, it was destroyed. Within that very generation... That's why Jesus says in verse 30, Truly I tell you, this generation will certainly not pass away until all these things have happened. What are all these things? The destruction of the temple that happened within that generation, within 40 years. By the way, this is documented evidence of Jesus' prophecy coming true. This gives us added confidence in trusting Jesus and in trusting the reliability of the Bible. And so we know that the, the, the temple being destroyed and the end of the world are, are not, don't happen simultaneously. They don't happen at the same time. They are two separate events. But within this passage... They are being dealt with together, almost as if they're happening at the same time. And this can lead to confusion. You see, if we fail to realize that, that they're talking about two separate events, it, it can lead to a lot of confusion and to wacky interpretations. And so Jesus, knowing what his disciples are thinking, says to them in verse 5 to 8, Watch out that no one deceives you. Many will come in my name claiming, I am he, and will deceive many. When you hear of wars and rumors of wars, do not be alarmed. Such things must happen, but the end is still to come. In other words, this is not the end of the world. Nation will rise up against nation and kingdom against kingdom. There will be earthquakes in various places and famines. These are the beginning of of birth pains. And so Jesus is warning his disciples and he's warning us to not be deceived. There will be many self proclaimed prophets who will, will be pointing to, to various signs, wars and famines and rumors of wars and earthquakes, claiming that these are the signs of the end. And Jesus is saying, don't be deceived. You see, that's exactly what happened in the run-up to the destruction of the temple in A.D. 70. Josephus, a first-century Jewish historian, tells us how the, the Jewish religious leaders... And, and, and the zealots hated the, the Jews so much, eventually got to a point that they led an armed, violent revolt against the Romans. This led to the Roman-Jewish War of AD 66 to 70. At that time, there were many would-be messiahs who claimed that they were God's chosen king. And that God was going to use them to defeat all evil. In other words, destroy the Romans. You see, they believed the Messiah would be a warring king. Of course, this is the complete opposite to Jesus. 
Jesus confronted evil and defeated evil in nonviolent ways through sacrificial love. But they believed the Messiah would be a warring king. And these would-be messiahs were claiming that God was going to use them to defeat all evil, to bring an end to this present evil age, and God was going to use them to usher in the new age to come. And they started pointing to these various signs to prove that this was the, the end of the world. The end of the world was happening now. You see, in the build-up to the fall of the temple, there were many wars and rumors of wars on the Roman front, frontiers. And, and there was an earthquake in Laodicea. And there was a famine in Rome during the reign of the Emperor Claudius. And there was a volcano eruption that, that covered Pompeii in lava. And so these would-be messiahs were pointing to all these events, all these signs, and saying, look, the end is near. The end's about to happen. God is about to bring in the new age. And many, with misplaced religious zeal and misplaced national loyalty, believed them. And when the, the Roman army eventually invaded, they all went into the temple believing they would be safe in the temple, that God would never allow the temple to be destroyed, and so they would be safe in the temple. And they believed that God was about to intervene and, and would destroy all the Romans and bring in the new age. But it never happened. The Romans surrounded the temple and simply waited for the people to starve to death. And while they were starving, the Jews turned in on each other and started fighting. There was infighting against the various fractions. They started fighting over scraps of dirty food. And then they started committing suicide. Eventually, the Romans did enter the temple and they burnt the temple to the ground and they crucified thousands of Jews. Over a million people died, mainly because of starvation, infighting, and suicide. Because people were deceived by religious hype. The end is coming. Look at the sign. Look at the sign. The end is coming. And so Jesus warns them, do not be deceived. He says, do not be deceived when you hear of wars and rumors of wars. Don't panic. Don't be alarmed. Don't panic. This is routine history. This is not the sign of the end. Don't be deceived. And then in verse 14, Jesus says, When you see the abomination that causes desolation, Standing where it does not belong. Let the reader understand. Then let those who are in Judea flee to the mountains. Okay. <laughs> what is the abomination that causes desolation? Well, that's a Jewish phrase. It, it, it comes from the book of Daniel. It, it's a Jewish phrase for anything sacrilege happening in the temple. And in this context, what it's referring to, in, in, in the build-up to the destruction of the temple in AD 70, these Jewish zealots entered into the temple. And the Jewish zealots committed atrocities in the temple. They appointed an unqualified person to be the high priest and offer sacrifices. And Josephus, the first century Jewish historian, tells us how they came into the sanctuary with polluted feet. And what Jesus is saying is when you see that happening, don't be deceived. Don't believe you're going to be safe in the temple. No, run for your lives. Flee to the mountains. And thankfully, we are told by a, a first century, second century Christian historian, Eubius, that the Jewish Christians in Jerusalem 
listened to Jesus' words. They heeded his advice and they fled. They left Jerusalem and they were spared. They were not killed. And all of this happened in A.D. 70. And yet today, and yet today they are still self-proclaimed prophets predicting the end of the world. Look at this sign. Look at that sign. Look at the wars. Look at the famines. Look at the natural disasters. Look at the war in Gaza. And, and they, they predict in the end of the world. And they write books on end time prophecy. And they have prophetic conferences where they, they watch the news and they look for signs and they start predicting when their end's going to happen. And they feed off people's fears. They cause a religious hype and, and people become anxious and nervous. And, and, and it's a false fear. And then they offer a false hope. If you just follow me, if you just do what I say, you'll be okay. It's deceptive and it's manipulative. Religious hype is dangerous. And so Jesus says, do not be alarmed. Don't be deceived. When you hear people pointing to various signs and claiming this is the end of the world, it's not. It's routine history. You see, ever since AD 70, there have been wars and rumors of wars and earthquakes and famine. This is the way of the world. And it's going to continue to be like that until Jesus returns. And makes all things new. And so Jesus says, don't be deceived. And many people have predicted the end of the world. And guess what? They're all wrong. They've all been proved wrong. We've got recorded end time predictions starting in the year AD 70. Working all the way through the Middle Ages all the way through the modern era, all the way up to today, and guess what? Every single one has been wrong. Some of the worst, in America there was a group that predicted the world would come to an end in the year 1967. When that prediction failed to come th true, there was a mass suicide of 909 people. Many people predicted the world would come to an end in the year 2000. The worst of that was in Uganda. When that failed to come, to come true, there was a mass suicide of 780 people. Or possibly a mass murder by the religious leaders when they realized their prediction hadn't come true. And what amazes me are there's still people today still making these predictions. And what amazes me even more is that when someone makes a prediction and it's proved to be false, what they simply do is give another date. And people still believe them. There's evidence of, of one group being proved wrong nine times. And people still believe them on the ninth time. And what I find even more mind-blowing is Jesus, all the way back in A.D. 33, says, don't be deceived. Don't believe these self-proclaimed prophets who are pointing to various signs. In fact, Jesus says in verse 32, but about the day or hour, no one knows. No one knows. Do you know what that means? It means no one <laughs> No one knows. It's a futile exercise. Stop trying. Jesus goes on, not even the angels in heaven, nor the Son, only the Father. Even Jesus doesn't know. If Jesus is content with not knowing, then so should we. Jesus says in verse 10, the gospel must first be preached to all nations. You know what he's effectively saying? He's saying, stop wasting time trying to predict the date. And get on with preaching the good news to everyone. 
You see, we are on the welcoming committee, not the planning committee. So Jesus protected the fall of the temple, and that prophecy came true in A.D. 70. And Jesus affirms that there have been rumors of wars and wars and natural disasters and famines and earthquakes from A.D. 70 onwards. He affirms this is the way of the world. This is not a sign of the end. And he affirms that his followers will be persecuted simply for following him. This is just the way of the world. This is life in a fallen world. This is the way the world will be until Jesus returns. But we have a hope. Jesus will return one day. And he will make all things new. He will restore all things. And the world will be just the way it should be. And that's our sure and certain hope. And in the meantime, rather than trying to predict when the end is coming, we need to get on with preaching the good news of Jesus to everyone so they can be a part of that. And we need to stand firm and faithful to God. In verse 13, Jesus says, But the one who stands firm, the one who remains faithful to the end, will be saved. How do you respond when you face a crisis? For the first century Jews, the way they responded was to believe the self-appointed prophets, the religious hype, to put their trust in them, to put their trust in violence, in misplaced national loyalty, and ultimately to put their trust and their hope in the temple building. These are false hopes. How do you respond when you face a crisis? And there will be crises. Natural disasters, wars, famines, personal crises, loss of income, loss of job, ill health, bereavement. We all face crises. This isn't a sign that the world's coming to an end. This is just the way life is in the fallen world. And when we face those crises, the question is, how are we going to respond? Where are we going to put our hope? In self-proclaimed prophets, in in religious hype, in end-time predictions, or in ourselves, in our, our money, our investment, our abilities, our CV, our accomplishments? Or are we going to put our trust in Jesus? Jesus, when he faced the crisis, put his trust in his heavenly Father. And he remained faithful to his heavenly Father. He stood up against injustices and evil, but not with violence but through sacrificial love. Are we going to trust Jesus and follow his example? Let's pray. Heavenly Father, it's so easy to get caught up in hype and panic and to look for end-time predictions and the like. Father, help us to put our trust in you Help us not to waste our time on that, but to get on with proclaiming the good news of Jesus and doing our best to make a difference, to stand up against evil and injustices. And Father, help us to keep the main things the main things. We ask this all in the name of Jesus. Amen. Thank you for watching. For more information, please visit our website, abgavenibaptist.co.uk.